one of the things you don't do as entrepreneurs, and I'll talk about this later, you are incredibly creative. You like vomit ideas. What you're lousy at in many ways is management. I couldn't manage myself out of a paper bag. Um, and so if you could find people who could do the things you're not good at, to expedite, like Gordon, my husband, he was the expediter of all the ideas I had. He was tenacious. He stayed. He was the, he, he just made it happen. Why well, I just came up yet with another idea. So my first, some little advice and few things, set clear goals because I can tell you, you don't. Uh, and and I, I remember hearing this maverick or reading about this maverick business uh, writer called Napoleon Hill. Now, he was the author of Think and Grow Rich. That's not me. No, of course not. not me. Um, he interviewed all the richest people in the world in the 1920s, and he distilled what they said. And this was the essence of it. So set clear goals. So be clear about your, your, in terms of your objective so that you can visualize it. He also said, and this is a bit quirky, you should meditate every day and never give up, which are probably good pieces of advice as well. But it is the objectives that are important. If your goals are fuzzy, your chances are you won't achieve them or not know that you have done them. And it was, today it was quite interesting because I had a meeting with one of the, the people that came to one of my surgeries. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful business. And she brought with her a couple of young people who were doing the same things, which are green funerals, green endings. And I was listening to this vision of one of the, 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 the husband and wife team, and the vision was so big. It embraced everything. And I said, focus, bring down, just make the goals clear. And it was a language that you're not used to because your vision, you're, you're just articulating your vision. What you all have to remember is when you're trying to change the world or trying, is that the job description of an entrepreneur is it's not enough just to be clear about the ultimate goal. We always have to be clear about the objectives along the path that is year by year, even day by day. So that's number one. I also think number two, learn what you need to know. Um, being successful means learning all the time and it follows that you meet somebody you admire, you ask them questions. Now, women are pretty good at this. Women will knock on the door, women will phone up, women will say, can I have some help? Blokes in my experience don't do that. Just watch a bloke driving a car and if he gets lost. He's not, he's not wired to ask for help. And that's a shame um, because I think there are so many business people who have left the corporate world and what we've got is wisdom and ideas and networking. And so it, I, I do really encourage you in many ways is to be able to do things by asking questions and, and getting to know people and getting to know, ask, ask the questions anyway. Um, I think, let me just tell you on this one, this is a body shop bus. I've also, <coughs> I think it's really cool to copy everybody's ideas if they're great. And I think for me and for all the groups of, of businesses that were in part of the Social Venture Network, which is sort of an alternative to the International or the Chamber of Commerce in America, we were all social entrepreneurs, we were philanthropists, um, NGOs, and our whole idea was just to make business kinder. And I remember when visiting um, Ben Cohen, Ben & Jerry's um, campus in Vermont, doing a talk at his, uh, at, with his employees, and he, you know, he showed me every blank space was an opportunity to give a message. And he used his ice cream as a kind of a social emissary. And their factory tour, were, most people are going to Vermont would go to Ben and Cohen's, Ben Cohen's, Ben and Jerry's, because they all got free ice creams. You can also learn from people around you, even your children, your parents and your neighbors, from anyone you overhear talking about their experience in whatever businesses that you've, you're in, from people bemoaning the lack of product or service, and dissatisfaction is a real energy for setting up any business. Um, and the usual business of inefficiency. At the moment, I am so pissed off with, um, with so-called so -called chauffeur cars because they lie to you when they say the car is arriving and it doesn't arrive. So there's somebody got to be changed, changing there. And I think any one of us are all pathetically grateful for anything that works. So listen and apply what you hear to your basic problems. The other one is positively positive. Be that. Successful social entrepreneurs are really pathologically optimistic. 
you are bordering on the obsessive. You are positive about what you're doing. It makes everything possible. In some ways, it's the most important shift that needs to happen, in my estimation. And then, I want to gain being positive stems from this natural resource from inside you. Enthusiasm, when it goes through the heart, is unstoppable. It never sees any problems. You can succeed at almost anything if you have unlimited enthusiasm. And enthusiasm comes from the Greek word meaning fulfilled with God. Enthusiasm is grounded in play. It is not grounded in work. Of course, you need a sympathetic bank. You need a support system in family and friends. You need a genuine partnership that works. But, but all of these become possible and more successful according to how positive you are. I would add here that if we're on the subject of money and family, don't ask your family for money if you can avoid it. Whoever lends you startup money has control, so it makes no sense to be holden to your closest relatives. It also puts an intolerable strain on the relationships that you have with your, with your family. And the last thing you want is your company's success or failures to go hand in hand uh, with, with any of the black clouds that are that going over the family. Don't deny yourself a wage. How many times have I told my daughter, for God's sake, give yourself a living wage. Be part, being part of a successful business person means believing in yourself and you deserve to be paid. Being positive, of course, doesn't mean putting unrealistic gloss on things. It's about seeing the world as it is and having some confidence in the way you see it. It means realizing that your business or your enterprise or your livelihood is a crucible in which you are remaking the world around you just a little bit better, and please, God, have fun. The other thing is find your area of excellence. Entrepreneurs tend to be brilliant starters, extraordinary people with first-class imaginations, and they are not necessarily the world's best practitioners um, and, or the art of seeing things through. We are not tenacious, let me tell you. The best way of dealing with this is not to beat yourself up, uh, for your failings is certainly, or not to draw a veil over them, but pret and pretend they're not there, is practice the acquisition of self-knowledge. If you are the ideal candidate for the Olympic sport of attention in detail, then you need to be sort of realistic about that and employ staff not in your own image. This is a brave thing. Don't employ staff that have the sort of image that you always want, that you have to have the skills. And you also need to value them for it. Once again, this self-knowledge is a resource that you can provide for yourself. Um, and if you don't have it, neither business manuals nor banks can provide it for you. But you can do it yourself. In fact, you absolutely have to.